Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from OSCON 2015 in Portland, Oregon. I'm here with Denise Cooper and Arnold Goldberg. How are you guys doing? Very We're good. good. Thanks. Now, you're both at PayPal. Mm -hmm. You do slightly different things. What, what do you do? Oh, what yeah, you very much so. Um, I'm I'm uh, a, a lowly worker, and Arnold's actually a vice president. So, um, Vice president of? So I run the uh, product and technology teams for a merchant organization. Okay, excellent. And I look after open source. Yes, like you always have. Like I always do. Yes. So, Arnold, uh, first question for you is your shirt. It says, the journey is the reward, and then down below it's inner source. All right. Can you tell me how those are packed together? So, you know, what we as software engineers really want to believe is that craftsmanship is the, the pinnacle of what we can actually achieve within, within whatever the job function is. And within engineering, what we're saying is inner source, again, this, this idea of having um, the open source ethos within a company, the amount of transparency that creates to actually get you to the top of your game, that's the journey. And, and the reward is you become more of a craftsman. Excellent. So let's let's unpack this whole inner source thing a little bit more because I know you've talked about it quite a bit yeah. and we've heard it being talked about. So one of the things I'm the most curious about is I've heard people say it improves their software development process and improves how they write software. Why is why is inner source different to do that? Why does it make it any different better well, software? You know, in real companies the where velocity is a big issue, engineers get lazy and they start um, knowing that their code's not going to be properly reviewed. Maybe it'll be rubber stamped because they're a good employee and they've done a pretty good job in the past, right? It's never really read. It's easy to get lazy. And when you get lazy you kind of forget that's that your code needs to be the very best it can possibly be every single time. But it's amazing if you know somebody else is going to look at it carefully, how much that changes. We saw that with open source. You know, the best programmers in the world work in open source because they're not afraid to have people look at their code because they know it's that good. So this is importing that idea into your organization. And so does it change the way people work together as well? I mean, you, you talked about culture. Is this actually having inner source changing more than just how you write code, but changing how you work together on projects? Just like Agile changed um, a waterfall methodology and handoffs along the way uh, to more collaboration across all the different different functions, what we're saying is InnerSource actually changes the way engineering works together. And again, this is not super interesting when you have 10 people in a company. This becomes very interesting when you have a you 20-year-old know, company with thousands of engineers. How do they actually work together in a way that creates product that, that is innovative but yet highly cross-dependent, interdependent? And so absolutely, it actually changes the way these engineers work together, taking what we've learned the last 15 years in open source, like, again, creating that pinnacle of craftsmanship with transparency and better process and tools that allow this to happen, breaking down those silos to actually get teams to work together in a much more collaborative way versus you know, having you know, the dominoes actually all align to come together to create something which takes a, an amazing amount of coordination versus having the engineers at the, the ground level actually working together. So if, if we look back, let's say 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and we, you, you've both been in open source for a while, a large enterprise, name any large enterprise, has probably been using open source for a while internally in their company. How is InnerSource different for them now than what was their adoption of, of software that they use internally? The so people who use open source it, it are, is, are using high quality software that had a low cost of acquisition. Yeah, yeah. They may have developed some expertise about how to use it, but they can do that from within silos. There can be the people who know a lot about you know, the, the um, NoSQL engine that we choose to use, and there'll be different people who know a whole lot about um, the virtualization engine that we choose to use. They may or may not give changes back, but it's an internal thing. It's, it's a tool that they've chosen to use. It's completely different than the OpenStack expertise needing to make a change to the way that we've implemented our, our NoSQL and actually submitting that patch themselves rather than submitting a feature request. So we're, we're saying, you know, pat, pull requests are better than feature requests for our engineering process. It's not about how you use it, it's about 
how you improve each other's code. It's and scratch your own itch, the way we used to say with open source. You know, I've got something I need to get fixed over there. I can ask and wait around, and they'll maybe fit it into their schedule. Or I can um, try to escalate it, get my boss to yell at their boss. Or I can learn enough about their code base to write my fix, send it to them. Maybe have some kind of conversation with the folks over there. Get my patch accepted. I'm done a lot faster, you know. So this is working at PayPal now, right? Yes. And what, what do you see are the biggest challenges to get everyone on board with working in an inner source fashion? Are there, are there challenges and hurdles to go through? What I would tell any both developer or executive that is trying to understand why things are starting to slow down in their organization as it scales out is think about how work gets done and what we're saying is Within PayPal, what we've seen for teams that adopt this inner source methodology, and again, all we're talking about is transparency and ability to impact change beyond just purview of your team to take someone else's code and say, hey, for me to great, create something great, I need to change that piece of code over there. I don't really own it. I'm going to create great structure and process to actually contribute via pull request that code, and, and together we'll create something great. Um, there has to be an executive understanding that this is actually important, and so it has to cascade down because it doesn't really work if it's just in a microcosm. It has to scale out, and so that's one thing that at PayPal we did a really good job understanding that this is how we go faster, not just this is how engineers become happier because they can get work done that they see needs to get done. It's also how do we as a company innovate faster because you know, a lot of the process and bureaucracy that was built up over time, uh, for certain reasons, we're just breaking it down and letting engineers innovate. So what I'm hearing a little bit is sometimes uh, educating the executives on why inner source might be important. Is there a, a good book on what is inner source or anything no, like that? No, we're working on that. <laughs> So, you know, we did, we did a booklet uh, with O'Reilly for this conference that's um, available, and we have a link on InnerSourceCommons.org for how to get to it. Uh, that booklet, it talks about some of our experiences. It's got a few sort of loosely written case studies about things that we did that we think work, and a bit about the antecedents, like what's, you know, the, how open source works for somebody who maybe doesn't have that background. And then um, our intention is to write a, a fuller book um, that's got information from other companies that are doing these experiments as well so that we start being able to identify a pattern because we did open source for so long that even by the time the, the name was coined we already knew what the licenses were we had a pretty good idea of what the what the behaviors between individuals would be what the models were if you were we don't have that yet for inner source we have an idea and some some pilots and some work we've done and we can see that it works but we know that the dials we're turning for us are different than the dials that another company might need to turn to change their culture. And we're curious to know all of that for the book, so we're working on it. So InnerSource Commons, what else is going to be on InnerSourceCommons.org? Well, so right now we have um, presentations that we've done. We have uh, some, we have uh, sort of a, a small story about what it is, um, and then a point or two that getting started pamphlet, booklet, if you want to download that and learn more. We have ways to engage in discussion with us, including IRC channel and a Quora area and some other stuff so that we can answer your questions. And uh, eventually we'll be scheduling you know, meetups for people that are involved in this together. And uh, we'll have more assets, um, tools that we're building to make it work for us. When you say us, Who's, who's collectively the us in this? Is well, it, you know me. I'm going to always design something that will be extensible to other people's problem sets, including ours, because that's what open source is. All the boats rise. We have various things that we need to do. Like, we want to be able to capture the written documentation that we're building in these conversations in a way that it is later searchable and, and it can answer other people's questions. It's really basic to open source. We're going to end up writing a tool that helps us aggregate all the different conversations that are happening. Because they don't just happen in GitHub. They happen in a lot of different tools all over the company. And we, want to, we don't want to retool. We, we don't want to recommend it in a new tool. What we want to do is make it easy for people in the normal day of their lives to go, oh, that's a technical discussion that belongs in the archive. I think I'll just send that there now. So a way for that to happen in, in chat 
in in um, mail, right? But we have a specific tooling that we use at PayPal. You know, we use Outlook. We we have various tools we use. Okay. Um, Somebody else might be using Gmail or some other tool. Uh, we use about half a dozen different chat engines, but there are more like four dozen out there, and yeah. somebody might be using a different one than we're using. So we want to make it extensible so that they can write plugins too, and in that way they're contributing on Inner Source Commons to an open source project about how to do open source inside your company. Excellent. I, the, the beauty is it's a methodology that we can actually use PayPal as a case study to really help us as a business, but also help the community uh, with a real example of how this works. But then obviously, like Denise is saying, there's so many other uh, scenarios from other companies that as you distill some of this down into what the blueprint is um, and how do you get even started. Like, uh, But I imagine that some, there are gonna be people who, you know, unlock some special superpowers that, that we haven't found yet, and yep. seeing how they did it is going to help it's us too. It's hard to imagine, but yes. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so you guys are in basically eating your own dog food, or the dog food that InnerSource Commons is creating. You're, you're actually, as you go, you're you're consuming what you're doing, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and living it, I mean, and to, improving to your clear, company. We we have been on a multi-year journey to get there. This is not something. It's it's. It's work to, to do this type of transformation within a company. It's work in progress. Um, but we are seeing a tipping point happening where it's no longer people second guessing this idea. It's people actually acknowledging and, and having passion around making this happen. So that, that's a really good point. And I want to, like, if you were to say to an executive of a large company that wants to start looking at InnerSource to transform the organization, how long did it take you to get to that tipping point where it became passion and part of everyone's DNA that this is what we're doing? How long does that journey take, the journey, to get to that point of the tipping point? I think it's going to be very different for, for each company. For each company. Um, what I would say is you got to look for a catalyst. Um, and a catalyst happens at both ends of the spectrum within a company. There's got to be grassroots acknowledgement that engineers are, are dying on the vine because they can't get their work done. And that has to be like part of it. Then there has to be another catalyst at the executive level, the acknowledgement of pain at the engineering level to say, okay, together we're going to do something. One without the other, I think, dies, right? Like a, an executive mandate by itself dies. A yes. grassroots mandate or a grassroots movement by itself dies after a certain uh, amount of penetration to a company. You need both. Okay. So my last question for you, too, and it's usually my last question is similar every time I do this. If you could fast forward 12 months from now, and we're having this conversation in Austin, Texas, actually it'll be nine months or yeah, 10 nine months. months from now. Yeah, convenient so, interval. Yeah, so <laughs> let, let's let's think about where do you want InnerSource and PayPal to be in those months ahead of us? Where would you like to see your progress go with both InnerSource and your company? I think for me. I, I, again, we're, we're down this journey, so it's just how do we get to, it's just innate in the consciousness and the culture of the company, and that, that's a work in progress, and, and I'd like to get to, it's a stone, a big stone rolling downhill, it's just everyone we hire, everyone we have internally just gets it, and the tool sets are there, and, and everything else as a company is just, it's working, like I said, work in progress. I think from an inner source point of view, it's how do we get more companies to expose their use cases, their scenarios. Yeah. So it's just like building a piece of, of software um, or a platform. A platform with one customer isn't really a platform. You get three or four customers on it. Now you have a platform. Same thing with the InnerSource Commons. You get three or four companies that have started going down this journey and have hardened the blueprint that we're trying to create right. in there. You, you get something real. And we're having those conversations here. I mean, people have been mobbing our booth to have that exactly that conversation. We had we had uh, your friends in the booth yesterday for about three hours, you know. And my friends are. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few friends around. Yes, here. I know you do. Um, so we obviously don't want to disclose anybody yeah. until they've agreed that that's what they want. Yep. But I know from the conversations I've been having before we made this announcement, there are a number of companies engaging in this. And nobody wants to do this on their own. They all want the benefit of everybody's understanding. So That's excellent. That's excellent. So, Denise and Arnold, I look forward to this journey. And hopefully we'll have that conversation in Austin. And we will see a lot of companies jumping on board. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.